Hello and welcome to Weekend Investing Daily Bites. We are shooting episode 315 today, end of the month, 30th November. And we'll draw lessons from Loras Labs. This is one of the stocks that we held in our portfolios. And a lot of people in the market seems to be holding this stock. And the stock uh, currently is in some duress. Uh, we'll discuss the charts and draw, try to draw lessons from that. The market still, the last hour or so, were somewhat uh, in a in a sideways trend. I can say plus minus 50, 60 points. But in the last hour, the market really sh- took off, and uh, the closing figures, however, are still 0.8 percent on Nifty, but it was much higher on the last traded price. And from the very morning. Uh, metals and autos had taken the lead today. Autos with numbers coming out tomorrow morning and metal stocks looking up on China opening uh, uh, narratives that is floating in the market. Energy stocks also doing well along with commodities, real estate doing all right. So the PSU banking sector that was running so far has taken some rest now. IT has been very, very slow in any case. But other than that, most other sectors uh, looked good today. So there seems to be a lot of new money that FIIs are coming in. And, and what I have observed in my uh, in my observation is that uh, FIIs tend to chase, uh, you know, uh, the markets at all time highs. So uh, a lot of momentum play is there from, from the FII side. And uh, as money gets distributed in the ETFs, uh, to various countries, uh, the strongest countries get the most flows once that uh, strength is confirmed by all-time highs. So while conventional wisdom is to sell out at all-time highs, uh, the momentum wisdom is to buy at all-time highs and not worry about the market when it is showing strength. As and when there will be a fall, you can take that into consideration at that time. But right now, as a, as a market or as a, as some stocks are making all-time highs, there should be no need to worry because the market is giving you a signal that uh, uh, that, that, there's, that, that, that the relative strength is there in its favor. If you see the broader indices, small cap index gained mildly at 0.5%, Nifty 50 up 0.75%. Mid and small cap index also the same. CNX 500 and CNX 200 about 0.8 or 0.9 percent, and Nifty Next 50 moving up 1.25 percent. Within the weekend investing small cases, MI 25 doing the best 1.9 percent up. MI NNF 10 doing 1.2 percent up. MI India Top 10 up 1.2 percent. Evergreen up 1.92 percent. MI All Cap up 0.7 percent. MI 50 up 0.6 percent, and the rest below half a percent mi ath and ath2 not doing so well near nearly flat for the day heat map for the day you can see where the greens are so the green areas are autos consumption stocks uh, some energy stocks st- steel and cement and in, in fact there is a rumor that uh, cement prices are going up from tomorrow fmcg continues to run tata consumer britannia levers uh, all up uh, banking was kind of subdued. SBI Life, however, 0.195% up. HDFC Life also up 0.98%. So insurance companies have been doing well. Uh, IT uh, very, very flat uh, going forward. Top gainers in the CNX 500 universe, Hoodco up 9%, Varun Beverages up 9%, Go Fashion 8.5%, Mahindra Logistics 7%, and Kalyan Jewelers 7%. So there is some talk about uh, capital gains on gold being uh, reconsidered to be brought at par with real estate. While this is very sketchy right now, uh, it does seem like that the three-year uh, slab that gold has, that before three years, any transaction in gold is considered to be short-term and after three years, it is considered to be long-term. In real estate, uh, that situation is two years, I think. Uh, so they are trying to get all asset classes classified into lesser number of slabs and we'll know about the final outcome only on budget day. IRFC, after uh, many days of running, uh, finally succumbed to some uh, profit-taking minus 7%, Scheffler minus 5%, 
easy trip also minus 5% uh, and uh, gland pharma down 5%. Now this is not Loras lab, this is ARC, the very famous ETF uh, run by manager Kathy Woods in the US. This ETF became very, very popular post COVID as the narrative that technology stocks and uh, biotechnology stocks will be leading the charge here on and that the world is changing and that digital transformation and the delivery of goods and services etc 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 uh, the 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 conventional stocks will not be doing so well going forward. That was a narrative built, uh, especially by this fund. And this fund had drawn in, I think, somewhere close to twenty five or twenty seven billion dollars of AUM at at its peak. And now that it, AUM is at seven billion or something close to that, so about uh, 60, 70, 80 percent has been lost, um, seven, definitely more than 75%. And just most people would have come in ab above $100 here. Uh, this is the place where, you know, the distribution happens and, and, and just the smart money moves out and, and, and the dumb money keeps holding on and on and on. So this is a perfect arc and the name suggested that, that an arc may, may happen and it has happened. Uh, now, why we are showing this chart in Indian context is because this is not this this entire formation. If you see, it is like an exponential curve starting even from 2015, 16, gradually picking up, gradually picking up, then going up exponentially. So this is what a typical bubble formation is. And there's nothing wrong in that in the sense that this will keep happening from time to time in, in stocks, in various sectors, in various markets. This is the nature of the market that, you know, uh, stocks or sectors or markets will move up and they will gain pace as they move up and then they will go into a, uh, you know, into the stratosphere with a phenomenal pace like we saw here in this, in this portion. And then it is over at least for next many, many years. And, uh, you know, it, until every buyer who wants to get out is out and uh, every, uh, uh, seller has had his, uh, uh, you know, sell. So it's like an auction, you know, when, 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 when buyers are exhausted, uh, when you can't buy anymore, every last penny of whatever, whoever wanted to buy has been put into the market. That is when this, this peak will happen. And then it is the seller's pressure that will just, they, they will, there will be no supply as such, but it will just fall on its own because there is no buying support anymore. Every, every buyer has already exhausted going from here to here. So while coming down, there is very little support from the buyers. So this is a very natural phenomena of auction that happens uh, time, time and again in every market in most stocks. So we have to find a way where we ride the trend, but we don't come back down to the, uh, you know, start point along with it. That is the key that I'm not saying that you should not ride such, such stocks or markets or trends. You must ride them. But then there has to be a mechanism to get out also. Now let's come back to uh, our own uh, domestic market and this particular stock called Laura Slabs. Now let me say at the outset, I am not a fundamental analyst. Neither am I make, making any claim whether this stock will go down or whether it will go up because we basically follow trends. And we don't care if its name is Loras or if its name was something else. Uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, the, 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 what, what does it manufacture? We are not bothered about all those things. As long as it is a liquid stock, it is not, does not have any red flags. Uh, it is giving us the proper uh, momentum uh, indication. Uh, we are willing to go for it. Now, if you see this trajectory, it is very similar to ARC actually. Uh, after 2020 COVID bottom, it was somewhere near 50, 60 rupees. And then it started going up from 50, 60 rupees. It, it went up within the next, uh, year and a half to 720. So somewhere close to about maybe 15, 20 times of where it was 
in 2020 this the stock went up so it must either have you know mastered the art of making gold out of potatoes or something like that because i mean it's very difficult to even justify what can happen in a stock that can make it go 20 times and then sustain there so unless they found some uh, holy grail about some uh, molecule or some breakthrough you know disease uh, uh, medicine for a particular disease that we have been struggling for last 50 years uh, this would not sustain at some point of time so uh, you know now from 700 it dropped to 550 then it went up again to 650 then it dropped to 440 and then in the last one year it has remained between 440 and 600 so if you see this uh, this part of the chart uh, since last october it has remained in 440 550 440 600 440 600 and now after many times of taking the support around 440 it broke down and and broke down with good volumes i should have put the volume chart here also so what is there are the lessons that we can draw from here and also the, now there are reports for instance kotak has come out with a report saying that you know it's a castle in the sky with a target of maybe 350 somewhere around here uh, so they, they these reports never come out you know when the stock is here for instance you know why was it not a castle in the sky at 700 why is it a castle in the sky at 410 now so uh, again i mean my purpose is not to bash anybody uh, that but uh, or, or or to bash kotak uh, or to uh, bash loras labs but to draw lessons from such episodes so that we don't repeat these mistakes in other episodes when they happen so now let's also see what happened uh, uh, you know in terms of uh, this run up so we essentially bought the stock in in a momentum portfolio here somewhere around 100 uh, the stock went up 600 percent from our buy levels reached 700 then then it started to drop and we got out somewhere around 560 or something like that let me just check here yeah this is where we got out this sharp fall that we got uh, in fact the exit could have been much better but there was a very sharp fall which caused i think end of the week exit at uh, at, at near 520 or 540 now there is another sort of school of thought here that you know the, the higher highs and higher lows that formation was going on till here and as soon as you can see that the first higher low was broken down there was a collapse also there was a head and shoulders pattern here with a exact exact target of 440 if you can calculate this head and uh, this neckline and that's where it went to so people who scoff at uh, technical charts or patterns i mean i'm showing you an exact precise formation that happened this time uh, nevertheless after this drop and after having taken these three supports and another head and shoulders in formation that was enough sort of indication that this breakdown will happen at some point of time and it has happened right now and the only thing that can save it is now if it goes above 480 it will negate this pattern now otherwise this pattern is indicating 250 or something like that i don't know whether it will come or not the patterns can 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 only be probability uh, high probability in nature but what i'm saying is there were so many indications of how and when to get out so you it could have been a head and shoulders pattern it could have been a lower low uh, breakdown it could have been a support breakdown here it could have been a support breakdown here it is uh, trading below 200 day moving average you could have done that uh, and, and and freed up your capital and used it for other opportunities so one year uh, since we've uh, we've got we've come out of here 13 months we've used that capital elsewhere even if nothing you could have kept it in the bank and still made seven eight percent and not lose money like this so the sleepless nights the anxiety i mean what what is it worth i mean if you are not uh, able to make this kind of a a, a a a a structured exit from a stock i mean buying anybody can do you could have bought at 100 200 150 300 everybody would have made money but you have to see that when a stock is going exponential it will collapse at some point of time unless it has you know uh, really discovered some uh, some pot of gold so that does not happen in 99 percent of the cases so so this is momentum people will say you know don't change momentum stocks no don't change momentum stocks because it'll fall down yes everything has to fall down after after chasing it doesn't mean that you don't chase i mean 
you you find a way of entry you find a way of exit you find a way of position sizing and you find a way of identifying stocks the the what to buy when to buy how much to buy and when to sell all that if it is clear to you then there's no need to to be you know afraid of any stock or any any rally that is happening so the stock basically is now down even further and there is no uh, you know uh, anybody's guess where this is going i hope that it, it comes back up above 480 and breaks this pattern and, and gives relief to many people who are stuck but i do want everybody who's watching this to draw lessons from it if you are enjoying this then this obviously this video is not for you because you will not draw any lessons from it but if you are looking for a change of the repetitive pain that you are uh, experiencing in your investing journey then you must come to a solution then you must look for a strategy then you must maybe even try to come to momentum because momentum is very very precise the end it's the key is that exit when momentum goes away that is the key momentum momentum will make you money without momentum no stock will make you money you find find the best value you need momentum to make money and you have to exit when the momentum is going away so protect profits some part may go away you will never be able to sell at the top nobody is able to sell at the top but protect some part of the profit if you made 100 to 600 if you protected even 400 out of that that is very good avoiding more pain in case of weakness don't don't sit in weak stocks don't sit in negative stocks don't see your portfolio red every day in the morning and uh, increase your blood pressure try to see greens in your portfolio have a strategy which will show you mostly green in your portfolio or at least lesser loss that's the whole idea of investing that you able you are able to beat inflation you are able to beat the benchmark with, with as much less stress as possible and of course opportunity cost of the capital that you will free from the uh, uh, from the you know stocks that are bleeding and one more thing i want to say here is that a lot of people feel that you know the stock price that i have entered is sacrosanct i have entered at 600 now until it comes to comes to 600 i will not do anything the market doesn't owe you anything about 600 the market does not consider 600 to be any 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 uh, price that it owes to you that you have to come to 600 back there is no there is no theory like that it may have touched 600 it may not come to 600 for the next 10 years so staying with the strongest stocks that have the most potential to give you that additional alpha to make you uh, you know have a positive vibe in your investment and to give you, uh, you know, uh, nice uh, sleep at night, must must consider momentum investing. So when momentum investing runs your money, you are freed from the captivity of when to exit. That is the bottom line on this. So thank you so much for watching this uh, episode of Daily Byte. I hope you are enjoying this series. Please do like and subscribe to this channel. We have uh, so many people tell me that you have so few subscribers, you know, maybe like 30,000 odd subscribers and this should have 100,000, a couple of 100,000 subscribers with the content that you are putting in every day. But I don't know. I mean, maybe my viewers are not sharing this, these videos with their friends and family. That's why we are not uh, growing fast enough. But uh, do, do, do that if you think the content is good and it will help us and it will help the... Uh, People who don't know much about the markets also uh, do, do a bit better in the markets. Thanks. Bye.